profusely overjoyed to take opportunity to welcome you all webinar participants on behalf of IJR SRW and Dairy and UGSF English Department, NGM College and Wisdom Educational Consultancy, Polachi. I invite you all to the webinar and I have the role of introducing and welcoming our chief guest and the expert speaker of today, Mr. Justin James, English lecturer from e-learning coordinator, English language center, Nisbo College of Technology, Sultan of Oman, for our international webinar series, Film 2020. He is a skilled man with several published works to his credit. He is an experienced English language and literature teacher, a skilled EFL, ESL, and ICT teacher trainer with a demonstrated history of working in the education and the education management industry. He is proficient in English as a second language, teaching English as a foreign language, classroom management, lecturing, and lesson planning, and so many academic activities. He is also an efficient education professional with a commission from Officers Training Academy, Camti, Ministry of Defense, Government of India. He is a man of matters with more knowledge to the English language and critical thinking. I feel wholeheartedly to invite you to this international webinar series, Philomath 2020, sir, and it's to you. Mr. Justin James, sir. Uh, good morning, organizers. Good and my morning. dear participants. Yes, sir. I'm very happy to be part of Philomath 2020. At the outset, I congratulate the organizers for organizing such a academic exercise. I wish you all uh, a great morning and wish you a great uh, interactive learning experience. I wish this is going to be a kind of um, interactive experience. Maybe it may not be that effective like a face-to-face -face, um, interaction, but I will give you opportunities to express your views and ideas whenever required, and we can have a kind of a two-way communication procedure so that it may the entire webinar becomes more uh, interactive and more fruitful. And to tell you about today's topic, developing vital critical thinking and communication skills through political cartoons. This title I decided to use today or uh, to talk on this topic because I felt that it is the need of the hour for us to be critical thinkers because decision making is part and parcel of our day-to-day -day life. Beyond decision making, keeping ourselves safe in our work environment as well as in our personal life is very important requirement to be happy and successful in our life. Therefore, it is important that we develop some sort of critical skills which can be applied in day-to-day -day life. This is uh, part of a published paper, which I published in January. So, developing critical thinking abilities in English language classroom using the subtle aspects of political cartoons. I worked on this paper with uh, Dr. Karthi and from VIT Vellur, both of us jointly worked on this and published this paper. Now, why critical thinking is very relevant? Because last one month, the immediate relevance, I am going to talk about the immediate relevance. Last one month, living in Gulf has become a little bit of a challenge. One reason is because of the pandemic. Many businesses are closing, many companies are closing, so many people are losing their jobs. Therefore, it is a kind of a very and difficult time and seeing your own friends losing their jobs and they are forced to leave the country without any proper plan for the future. On the one side, this is a challenge. On the other side, many of the Indians are losing their job because of their uh, social media activities, their unsolicited comments that has resulted in their termination 
and some are even facing jail terms in these countries. I basically understand that there is a lack of understanding on our part. This lack of understanding is because we are not critically thinking or evaluating our behavior or what we do, either in public life or in private life. So therefore, it is important for us to, you know, understand every situation, evaluate and to make proper decisions. Therefore, it is also our responsibility as teachers to inculcate critical thinking skills in our students. So as language teachers, it is all the more important for us to take time and effort to teach and create critical thinking abilities in our students. Now, before going into the presentation proper, I would like to show you a picture. This is a kind of a small warm-up activity. You please have a look at this picture for a minute. And after that, I tell you what to do. I think you could see the picture. And you can use the chat box to tell me the responses. Could you all see the picture? And uh, read the message there. Flamingo egg dogs are pink. Right. How many of you have seen a real flamingo egg? Anyone in the audience? No. Do you think flamingos eggs are pink in color? They go inside of the egg. No idea. Okay. No idea. Okay. Now, can you guess whether it is pink or a different color? Make a guess. Now, I want definite answer. Maybe it's okay. That's undecided. Yes or no? Now, you need not see that, but, you know, Take a guess. Okay. Now, those who say yes, how did you arrive at uh, answer yes? Yeah. Now tell me, those who are giving answer is yes. How did you arrive at the answer yes? Did you verify the fact? Now you all have your mobiles, isn't it? Just one or two of you can uh, go to Google and check. As ask. Okay, read somewhere, somewhere. Assuming. Yes, it is pink verified through Google. I don't think so because flamingo egg yolks are yellow. Like any other egg. And this post was uh, taken from one of my Facebook contacts. She's in fact, uh, the person who posted is a chemistry teacher. Then I really did believe. Then I messaged her and asked, are you sure about it? She said, yes, sir. Then I verified and I found out, no, it is not correct. 
now the idea is that we are bombarded every day with these kind of images and mes messages we come across many images messages day in and day out some are uh, real some are fake now normally what we do is we take it for granted take these things at face value and try and believe what is given us right also immediately share it unmindful of whether it is uh, or without verifying the veracity or the truthfulness or the genuinity of the information it is fine for fun but in reality as a educator or as even any common man one has to verify this information before sharing or before reacting to it the easy way is to ask google so nowadays you don't need even need to type it out the question just you can ask you get answer from the mobile so this is a kind of warm up exercise i think you would have got some idea about the kind of presentation i am going to make today now let me go on to analyze some of the education related theories that uh, advocate teaching critical thinking to the students now the first one is developing the critical thinking capabilities of students is one of the primary aims, aims of education now critical thinking is added as a 21st life skill so it is not a alone educational skill it is added as a life skill in 21st century education later i can tell you the reasons why it was uh, added like that and today why uh, maybe a couple of years back even 5 years back we never heard of uh, this term often repeated in education circles but today everywhere this is repeated in edu and particularly in educational arena it is discussed very often so the primary aim is to inculcate critical thinking now why it helps students to analyze materials formulate opinions about them and to express their opinion with reasons and evidences to support them see look here it is very important to receive information and also formulate process and make some sort of opinion and also you the student should be able to express their opinion with evidence and reasons to support them you cannot simply say something is pink or something is red or somebody is good or somebody is bad or a particular machine is working well or it is not working well unless and otherwise you know for sure that thing is uh, real whatever you say is real critical thinking abilities help students to become autonomous and independent thinkers so this is another requirement when you are educated when you grow up in society you should be able to independent you should have independent thinking and you should be able to identify the bias which is coming to you also you know look at a problem from various angles and evaluate different options that are available either to solve the problem or to tackle the issue which is cropping up it is essential to develop critical thinking among students because critical thinking abilities help student to become autonomous and independent thinkers this is just the extension of the first point just i discussed then the next one is the foundation of for critical thinking states so there is a foundation which uh, promotes critical thinking it states that in its mission statement that it is essential to develop critical thinking among people because there is a clear purpose the cultivation of fair minded critical societies through demonstrated tools of critical thinking represents our best hope for people across the world to work for the public interest rather than vested interest now for example india is a solidarity oriented society you cannot um, live in isolation you have to work and interact with the people when you are working and interacting with the people you have to keep the common benefit or uh, the purpose of um, extending common benefits to all should be one of the goals so that harmony and peace exist in the society
So therefore, this is one of the basic functions of uh, learning critical thinking or training oneself to think critically. Critical thinking requires the cultivation of core intellectual virtues, such as these are the core intellectual virtues, intellectual humility, perseverance, integrity and responsibility. So one should be, you may know many things. You may be a learned person. You can um, write wonderful programs using any program given to you, any software, but you should have a humility that, okay, I know this, but at the same time, I know not enough of information. There may be other information which I may need to know and exhibit a kind of humility. Perseverance to do hard work, also motivate from within yourself and do hard work and also integrity. You know what is the meaning of integrity and also to be responsible. And uh, we know what is being responsible. Nothing of real value comes easily. A rich intellectual environment allied with curious and determined students is possible only with critical thinking at the foundation of the educational process. This is also another important thing. So value-based society, how do you create a value? Now you find, um, you know, after uh, the advent of uh, software companies, those who are working in um, software companies, they think that they are the best in the world, best in the society. The reason is that, uh, you know, they are uh, highly paid and their job, of course, they do a very important job in the world at the same time. They are the only ones who are um, there in the society. So they have to be humble and accept that others are also doing their part very well. So that is why, you know, uh, a rich intellectually uh, oriented students, we should create such a kind of an atmosphere among our students where they understand their abilities, also accept others' abilities so that, you know, they become very productive in the society. Now, what is critical thinking? Some of the theories we can analyze now. The pedagogical co concept of critical thinking is rooted in Socratic notion of deep questioning. As far as we know, we think that Socrates the one, is the one who developed that questioning mind. But I feel that um, he is the known person in human history, uh, in the modern human history. But I believe that uh, the questioning was already there, existing in the human society for hundreds of years. And um, the culmination of that is uh, Socrates' thinking and uh, questioning. So this is one base for uh, critical thinking. And Norris and Ennis define critical thinking as reasonable, reflective thinking focused on deciding on what to believe or do through cognitive skills of analyzing, inferring, interpreting, and evaluating. So. These are the four important things. Analyze something, infer from that, and interpret that information you are getting, and evaluate the veracity of that information. Lippmann says that it is a healthy skepticism. Of course, you know the meaning of the word skepticism. Here I would like to tell you the difference between criticizing and critical thinking. So sometimes people misunderstand that uh, criticizing others is critical thinking. It is not like that. Critical thinking is not criticizing. Criticism is negative. Critical thinking is something positive, totally different. The focus is totally different. Criticism is um, aimed at hurting, but uh, critic uh, critical thinking is aimed at understanding. That's the difference. Lewis and Smith call it higher order thinking skill. So this is also one of the Bloom's um, taxonomy theories later developed into educational pedagogy. That is higher order thinking skills, thinking beyond uh, what is uh, immediate. So going beyond the boundaries or uh, out of box thinking. Jacobson and Ignacio consider it to be the conscious use of learning strategies, which involves engaging in a task and increasing the awareness of the context. So this is also so critical thinking is it is a learning strat strategy, which I'm going to discuss that is uh, mainly my focus today is on learning strategies, how we can develop learning strategies using critical thinking methods. So which involves a task and increasing awareness of the, by doing these tasks, uh, students get uh, more awareness, more knowledge, and more understanding about the situation which is being presented before them. Halpern considers it as goal director and evaluation oriented thinking strategy. So there is a clear cut aim and uh, process of evaluating the thinking. So goal-directed, there is something 
directing it towards um, a particular goal, particular outcome. Whitmore looks at critical thinking as an ability to identify central issues, evaluate conflicting claims based on evidence and authority, and interpret whether conclusions are warranted or not accordingly. So just now we did a warm-up exercise there, you know, there is a conflicting claim that uh, the egg of uh, flamingo is uh, pink in color, but it looks like an authoritative information. But when we are able to, you know, verify, then when we can uh, decide whether it is correct or not, the claim, whether there is, this is a correct claim or a false claim. Now I'm coming back to another educational pedagogical te technique or uh, theory, which claims that visual people are visual learners. What are visuals? So visuals refer to all relevant materials like pictures, excuse me, photographs, cartoons, and any other visual representation that can be used in a language learning environment. Now, visuals see, we see the world and most of the information we get through our eyes by seeing. That is the source of our information. So therefore, uh, visuals um, uses a lot of information. We start learning through visuals. Now, what are the visuals that can be used in a classroom? Visuals like cartoons, caricatures, and pictures are rich sources of information about issues of topical interest, very relevant topics, which are uh, they are in day-to-day -day life, which can be used as the effective teaching aids in language classroom. So these are uh, called uh, authentic materials because authentic materials are not custom-made materials that are specifically made for education. For example, textbooks. Textbooks are custom-made materials. They are not authentic materials. They are custom-made material. But authentic materials are the sources we take from our society, we take from our day-to-day -day life to the classroom. Why? Because um, it is important to integrate what is happening outside and what is happening inside in the classroom. So society sh should have direct relevance with education and uh, education should have a direct relevance to the society. Now, what are the advantage of using this, these vis visuals? The advantage of using visuals is that they can break the monotony of reading from textbooks. They can relate learning and real life and thereby making the learning process even more engaging, imaginative and motivate for motivating for students. So these three things are very important. When you teach a lesson, it should engage the students. If you have 60 students, 10 students in the front bench, they listen to you. Backbenchers are using their mobile and uh, using WhatsApp or Facebook. It is not engaging. So if all the 60s, 120 eyes are on you and they are you know, physically acknowledging your presence and listening to you, then it is engaging. Imagine it you. So when you discuss these things, not only engage them, but also kindle their imagination and motivate them to think and learn. So it is not teaching, it is learning from teacher-centeredness to the learner-centered. They can help to elicit genuine responses from learners from their life experience. Again, when you relate society, each one will come out with um, a response which is related to his understanding of life, his experiences, and the challenges he faces in the society. The great thing about using visuals is that it is where everywhere you can find uh, any number of visuals which make it easy to find and to use them to teach a language. So any a picture, a photograph, or a drawing, an advertisement from a billboard, all these things can be used as a part of your class, language class. Now, why this is very effective? Because all our brain, 75% of our sensory neurons in our brains are uh, focused towards uh, visual reception of information. So you can look at this picture, the picture superiority effect. What you see is uh, more effective. You believe it more. And um, there is, so if I uh, teach the word a tree to a student, so tree, it uh, requires some more effort on his part to understand what is a tree and things like that. This is just an example. But uh, if I show him a tree, that is visually, it is more effective. And if I want to tell them about mango, if I say mango is like an apple, it is a fruit, but it is yellow in color, it is sweet. They can only imagine to a limited level. If I present a mango before them, 
and probably they taste it. That will be a different kind of experience, isn't it? So that is why visual effects are more uh, effective than other way of getting knowledge. Now I am coming to the, um, why should we use cartoons? Now cartoons are very famous right from the independence. I think uh, even before uh, R.K. Lakshman was there as a great cartoonist. It is a common knowledge that uh, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru used to um, every morning read the newspaper and he will specifically look for the, the political cartoons of R.K. Lakshman. Because whatever happening in the parliament, the reflection of that will be there in the next day newspaper. And Jawaharlal Nehru has understood many important aspects of uh, running the government or making policies from these cartoons. He learned a lot. And he used to, you know, it is a kind of critic or it is a kind of uh, uh, re-evaluation of his own policies that helped him a lot in uh, making proper policies. So it had uh, such a great impact um, in our uh, politics, the politics of India, or uh, in formulating the policies of the government. Now, the format of cartoons and caricatures often produces a strong political, economic, and social impact because uh, the cartoonists are very, very sharp people. With a, they are gifted. They have the faculty of seeing thinking of things in different angle, and they produce uh, what will be the kind of impact of a particular political policy or economic decision or uh, any other decision and its so, social in, impact. Editorial or political cartoons, those days the cartoons used to come as the first page editorial. So that is one of the features of any newspaper. Cartoons cover a variety of high level concepts that are hard to convey in written text. So it's more effective. So even if you write a um, 2000 page essay, you cannot communicate that uh, particular concept which is given in that cartoon in a better way than presenting this cartoon. That's why cartoons are more effective. It is visual, it gives an, uh, so and it is giving some gap also. See, one effect of a uh, um, cartoon is or how it is different from an essay. Essay, everything is um, you know given, described. A student reads an essay, he understands, but uh, it doesn't touch his imagination because there are no information gap. Everything is explained. But whereas in a cartoon, there are a lot of information gaps where you have to think, you have to interpret, and you have to understand. So there way, you know, it is generating a kind of uh, intellectual um, activity, which results in uh, thinking and experiencing. Language does not prove to be a barrier in dealing with visual presentations. Thus, cartoons and caricatures can be a rich and viable resource for a variety of purposes in language teaching and promoting CT. So this is also, I have been discussing this for a long time. I'm skipping that, Just to, I think you can follow. They have broad coverage of international affairs. What are the topics covered by these cartoons? Population, pollution, love, adventure, war, corruption, nepotism, favoritism, and scandals, personal and social life. So these are all aspects of society. These are all aspects of everyday life. So which will evoke readers' general knowledge and interest. Because as human beings, we have uh, many things. We don't learn only from the university or college, but also from the society. So we always come with a kind of preloaded or pre-recorded knowledge. And uh, when you come to the classroom, when you see these cartoons, because you have political knowledge, you have social knowledge, you have uh, knowledge about all the um, things uh, given here, this will uh, evoke more thinking on your path. They are easy to understand and their originality, freshness, unusualness, that's very important. So cartoons are unusual. Some of the happenings or some of the incidents are presented in a very unusual way. Unless you see the picture, oh, this is fine. This is uh, giving a very unusual way of looking at it. You'll be surprised. And spontaneity will delight and refresh their readers. So the first experience of cartoonists, it has to delight you. Now there is a problem in our society. We are moving towards uh, less society because cartoons about a particular party or particular political personality is not delighting us. It is, um, you know, creating discard among people. So this is also something we have to understand. So this, uh, we cannot allow this to happen. So a cartoon should delight. They provide it reveals a lot of information. And the information is presented both 
indirectly and in a context. So there are some information contexts are pre presented directly, which apply to the context, and some directly. Maybe your policy, no, that these are the consequences of that particular policy. And then we can see the cartoons which I am using. Now, this is my present more critical in this thinking strategy. So, so far, our introduction is over. Now, I'm coming to the main part of my presentation. Excuse me. Degree in the desert, and my throat is drying. I need to drink. Okay, so the seven strategies, visual literacy, number one, we had a uh, little bit of glance about uh, in questions. Yes. Combining the given to us on evidence from reliable sources, we had a small uh, activity, overcoming confusion, resisting manipulation. Presentation is that I have taken seven. I think one is not a cartoon, it is a meme. To use cartoon for one particular strategy, starting from developing visual. So you will be seeing seven cartoons. And um, I will explain how this particular step can be given to our students using that particular cartoon. Now, what is developing visual? So from that, I got this very important idea. Visually literate society, our world is changing fast, faster can keep up with our historical modes of thinking and communicate is presented. You know, the world is moving fast because of technology. You know, after World War uh, II, there was a few, within 50 years, there were a lot of improvement in mechanism and technology. And when the computers, after 1990s, uh, so on, and when the internet came, then uh, faster and faster, the world is moving at a very fast rate that, uh, you know, Generation Z student cannot uh, concentrate now, not 10 seconds in a particular uh, activity. So you have to keep changing the activity for students if you want them to listen to you because the information they get through social media is much faster, much visual and informative than what as traditional modes of thinking. So thinking is out so visual literacy to both read and information. They be able to learn to think and solve problems in a visual domain. You should be able to see it in your head, analyze the whole problem and it should be able to one should be able to see it in your mind. And the question evolve requirement for success in business and life. So if you want to be successful in business, but also in your profession, be it as a teacher, doctor, or whatever it is. So you have to be very effective. This I have already discussed. Learning is to allow the learner to do in such a way that a meaningful interaction occurs between him and whatever he sees. Okay, so there should be a kind of interaction. Uh, Learning is not the. Are you experiencing any problem? Uh, Am I going fast? Uh, Am I going very fast? Radar. 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 
No, some people have kept their microphones open. It is on and uh, wind, wind, wind. I am also getting the problem. I am in a tightly closed air conditioned room. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Prabha. The nature of learning experience should allow the learner to do something in such a way to, yeah, I have read this. The nature of learning experience should give practice. Visual phenomena for heat environment, which are as to be able to the visual phenomena, what's required for you. Someone's video is on. Can you please switch off that? Unmute your video. The nature of learning experience should motivate the learner to practice his ideas visually. Also very important. So uh, you cannot learn anything. Our students cannot learn anything unless they are motivated to learn. Now, before showing the next uh, cartoon, I am going to discuss the first, uh, you know, how to have visual literacy. I would like to uh, give a kind of disclaimer. See, all the cartoons I have selected are from very famous cartoonists who are presently um, publishing cartoons. All very learned. Uh, and I the selection of cartoons does, uh, doesn't in any way my personal party or politics or whatever is happening in the country. So I am quite doing this only for academic purpose. So make it very clear that there need not be any misunderstanding because I'm using it and I'm using it for only one purpose, for academic purpose. So when I use it for academic purpose, I would like to maintain a very, very distinct So there is no other. So this is just, I don't want people to misinterpret and uh, have a negative discussion about it. So let us look at this first cartoon. Tell me of this cartoon. Madam Chitra, can you, can you play the video? It is troubling me uh, because uh, my, you know, there is a lot of movement there and it is troubling me. You can type out your answer. Do you like the cartoon? Is it interesting? Now participants can um, tell their opinion about um, this particular cartoon. It is in discussing every series. Is it writing? Yeah, it is uh, sarcastic, of course. That is the main. Right, it is good. Ms. Mohan, uh, trouble and current situation faced by RBA is shown. Satyar, yes. A presentation of tiger. Have a look at the tiger's mouth. Okay, now, um, 
will you be surprised if I tell you that you can have a two hour class English language teaching using this single picture. I'll demonstrate how this can be done. Uh, you can uh, uh, make students to communicate very well. Yeah, it is more effective than uh, number of words. Now what I'm moving the cartoon and I'm going to the next uh, discussion. Say when I go to the classroom, I have a picture on the our project questions. If you don't have, if you are rural area, you can take a print out of this picture and uh, you can um, show it to your students. A4 sized copies uh, for five students or six students, you can give one copy. Give the Questions, very basic uh, questions. You start with uh, basic questions. As you go down, you efficiency or impact of the question or make it more uh, difficult, more thinking oriented. It is, is it funny or serious? So somebody said it is funny. What do you think is funny or serious? Can you answer this question, any of you? on the plate. Do you recognize the people in the cartoon? I think as yes, isn't it? You recognize the two people who are in the cartoon. What do you see on the plate? What do you see on the plate? It is the teeth of the tiger. Yes. Yes, Miss Rose. Do you find anything missing from the mouth of the tiger? Yes. Are the people in the cartoon happy or sad? Yeah. They have 70, 000, 76, crores. Okay. Why do you think they are happy or sad? Now look at the progression of this question. So as, as each question, the students, uh, you know, look at the picture again, again to have more, uh, you know, to have more understanding of the picture. That's why I told you either you project it on the screen or give them a copy. So this is very important. You know, the actually the teeth of the tiger honey, they are taken away from the reserve fund of the RBI. It is for, uh, you know, for a tiger to ha have its teeth intact. So it is important for the RBI to have the funds reserve emergency. Now these questions are just preliminary questions uh, to you know, kind of um, create or uh, to kindle the thinking of the students. Look at the other questions. Now, next level of these are all critical questions. You have to direct thinking, make them understand the real issue. Maybe 60 students are in the class. Some may not even know undergraduate level what is RBA. OK, so when uh, so we are going to give them some background knowledge. Also, we are going to discuss the fun. Okay? They are going to learn by themselves. Do you know what RBI is? Can you type it out, someone? RBI? What kind of R is RBI? Financial regulatory authority of the country. What are the main objectives of the RBI? Controls RBI? That's right. Reserve Bank of India, correct. So what are the functions of RBI? We may not, we know some of the functions like currency printing, entering the financial issues of the country. 
correct it's a so many functions are there now for a student who has uh, very little knowledge about rbi maybe they know rbi reserve bank of india is like sbi or any other bank but when you ask these questions and uh, maybe allow them to research on that their mobile in the class go to google find out when, you know i am shifting from rbi to the tiger so i am trying to juxta juxtapose um the issues there with the presentation of symbolic presentation why do you can a tiger survive without teeth it cannot eat it cannot kill it cannot eat yeah mainly use yes it will be out of star we no man to man it will die have a slow death now what is the implication if rbi the funds from rbi is removed the rbi becomes like a teethless tiger that's the implication there why do you think the people in the picture are shown as running away with a plate that contains the tiger's teeth maybe are is it a legal and think or it is a politically manipulated decision they have made now these are all you know will make our students of the situation it is not simply reacting why do you make fun of our prime minister or uh, finance minister taking our students beyond what is being shown there that is what visual literacy is about then can rbi survive if the reserve funds are diverted from the government's routine business you know for the government's routine business then the last question look at the it is a decision making question is the cartoonist against the government or action of the government this is a very important specific question this is where we do proper training to our students to critically think evaluate and to arrive at a conclusion they generally people think that they look at the cartoon and uh, they think that they immediately abuse the cartoonist or whoever is using the cartoon or sharing it in the whatsapp are you talking against the government and they make lot of noise but maybe the cartoonist was having breakfast with the prime minister that day who knows like jawaharlal nehru who was entertaining um, or who was learning a lot from marke lakshman but we ordinary people without understanding what is happening the reality we react in our own way without thinking so when you ask this question the question number 9 is the cartoonist against the government or the action of the government maybe he is from the same party but he didn't approve the um, this is by this cartoonist by alok sharma but he doesn't approve that uh, action of the government so this is what the detachment should be very to our students it is not against the government of the government These are different. Make them understand. Shall I move on to the next one? If we have any questions, we will discuss at the end. Asking questions. So this is uh, another strategy of developing critical thinking. Asking the relevant right question. So. there are many other anecdotes about uh, the apple falling and somebody inventing magnetism of the earth isn't it so there are uh, questioning has been there in a human society right from the beginning of the or right from the origin of human species that's why we are today here and attending this web conference i sitting in uh, oman and you people sitting in different parts of the world so it is possible because of thinking and asking questions questions have brought a lot of changes and answers given answers to the problems of the people this reveal interest now by asking questions now when i showed the cartoon first time maybe you and as teachers maybe you understood the whole impact of the thing but uh, we are giving it to a student maybe he may or she may not be able to it uh, in the whole, understand the whole perspective of that cartoon but when you are asking questions different questions and the different level of the question i am slowly taking them progressing towards a goal directed thinking which i mentioned in the theoretical part it is a goal directed thinking questions reveal interest 
questions reveal gaps in and strength of understanding questions improve recall questions keep learners engaged questions build a foundation for new knowledge so these are all the things you know by asking questions why will the when i asked will the tiger survive there is a gap then the it is gone tiger has to eat meat not eating soft food so it has to have the teeth isn't it there is a gap and they understand the gap and uh, it uh, brings out mem you know the information if uh, there is a student who has so uh, more information about reserve bank immediately he will become enthusiastic in the class and he will start telling us yes, this is a bank which has got a uh, control of other banks to you know maintain the economic uh, things those students will, will be very happy to interact in the class so my title is communicate you know abilities how to communicate your abilities also so they engage in communication and questions keep learners engaged so there cannot be any diversion because they are all attention is focused you become very quickly get engaged into the uh, question build a foundation for new knowledge how does it happen there are students who do not know enough information about reserve bank they get information lot of information from the students they uh, those who know about it isn't it so new knowledge some for some students it is old knowledge uh, that is uh, you know recapitulating the old knowledge but for some students it is new knowledge well, you know kind of learning is taking place for them isn't it the second one is over now go to the uh, sorry this is the second one i am going to demonstrate uh, how this question help in understanding the knowledge so retrieving relevant knowledge from long term memory i have explained interpreting the meaning of information being able to translate knowledge into one's own words new information to what already you know so when they are discussing this cartoon definitely students will not keep quiet they will interact between um, the, so they will interact with other uh, classmates so this is uh, interaction is taking place they use their own vocabulary to explain the problem shown there and using what you know to do the required task so maybe at the end of the day i asked them to write a paragraph about uh, the functions of reserve bank of india after the discussion is over so they used that uh, you know knowledge the knowledge they got just now in the class by analyzing the cartoon they are going to use the knowledge in the form of a paragraph in an essay so when they are uh, they say they take things apart examine they raise questions and they find relationship with the uh, information discuss they synthesize analyze and organize and write and also they uh, they involve in appraising judging criticizing or critiquing the outcomes of any of the other levels and also finally what happens creating so synthesis and creating putting things together building on what you know to create something new seeing new relationship or making new connections so one uh, uh, productive outcome will be a paragraph so where he can put all the information he got and apply coherence apply the grammatical rules he has learned in maybe in the previous classes and make a wholesome output so it is a output oriented education now look at the cartoon how questioning can be developed using this cartoon this is by jubanis this cartoon so you now uh, let us go to the do you like car there yeah. all the participants are silent i don't get any answer from you yeah 
it's a honeycomb article is like a honeycomb and they are going to tease it or stir it and they don't have any protective mechanism so let us move towards the questions how you are you are you can um, develop thinking by asking questions actually all the cartoons i am asking questions only but this particular thing is focused on teacher asking questions teacher developing um, worksheets with lot of questions to promote thinking promote communication who are the people in the cartoon it is a general knowledge question isn't it you all know what are they doing they are trying to take honey out of the honeycomb uh, it means that they are trying to take some political mileage out of what they did do you think they have taken enough it is another um, higher order thinking question do you think they have taken enough precaution or protection to do what they are doing no so which means they are taking a great risk now do you take risk in your life do you need to take risk in your life yeah challenges are to be taken sometimes you have to plunge blindly and maybe you will be successful you or you may burn your fingers okay without decision making you cannot predict every outcome and uh, make decisions okay now do you think they will succeed in taking honey from the honeycomb without being hurt it is a prediction again you know this uh, critical thinking one aspect is what will happen in the future you know we don't what is going to be we can ask them to uh, predict and um, madam disha please into the next question do you think the image portrays the inherent risks involved was it a risky decision or not so very very risky decision isn't it like going to the honeycomb uh, without any protection without any cover and they don't even have the smoker in them normally people in my part of the world you know like um, in kanyakumari rubber estates when they uh, keep honey bees they take a kind of smoker i used to do this as a boy go and help them out you know i'll hold the smoker and smoke it out and all the bees will fly away then we take the honey without any risk yet we get one or two sting from the bees okay so do you think the image portrays the inherent risk in what what is article 370 how many of our students know how many they know by name what are the intricacies if you want to do this exercise don't you think a teacher has to prepare read a lot understand the you know how teachers are also we also get new knowledge because we want to teach our students what are the provisions of article 370 is more specific question how do you relate removing article 370 and stirring the honeycomb without any protection don't you think these questions will provoke lot of thinking on the part of the students to think consequences of the removal of 370 again prediction you don't know but you can predict some students may predict um, see we need not worry about the accuracy of answer here here we are focusing on asking them questions and making them think and communicating it will come you know it will uh, when they become very fingers they 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 will be improving in their accuracy of giving the answer so they it needs a lot of experience and learning the last question do you think the government should have considered the ordinary kashmiris opinion before declaring article 370 null and void this is a democracy isn't it so in a democracy can you um, one person make a decision where is parliament where is assembly so we are um, you know experiencing different uh, problems now also because of pandemics shutting the country overnight thousands of streets so it is part of decision making maybe you know the 
able to predict. So why prediction is, uh, you know, students should be trained in prediction because prediction also helps to understand um, uh, the impact of their decision, impact of the decision they're going to make. So unless good at predicting, you cannot be a successful administrator. Leave alone running a country, can you run your home? If you are not able to predict things, let us start from the home. We are all matured people with our own families. If we can't predict things, it is very difficult. It will be very challenging to even run a home with two kids, husband and wife with a, two kids, isn't it? So therefore, running a country, you need a much, much uh, higher level of foresight and capa capacity to predict. Then looking for the connection between uh, subject. This is the third uh, critical thinking strategy. How you can connect things. Write down the important things they learned that day. This is one way of making them connect. For example, after the class is over, ask the students to keep a diary and uh, ask them to write down what all the things they learned. Why it matters to them, our society. So here, here again, so they can say, I learned about Article 370. Okay, that is information they got. But what did they understand from this? Why it matters to them, our society. So this they have to think. They can actually write from the information, but thinking is involved. So therefore they become the creators of new knowledge, new language. They have to use sentences, vocabulary, and write something. List one way in which the day's course content manifests itself on campus or in their home lives. How what they learned one day life in the campus is related to their life in future. Imagination is uh, required. Identify a television show, film, or book that somehow illustrates a core concept from the class. So let them go and uh, search for uh, a book or film which talks about um, Article 370 related to that maybe train to Pakistan, the partition of India, related issues. You know, it is historical, but, you know, linking the old knowledge or whatever happened with what is happening today, further broadening the understanding of Article 370, why it was created, why it was there for so long, why it is scrapped today. Describe how today's course material connects to the last week's. They learned something about uh, the previous week. This week, uh, they have a connection. Both are of national interest, isn't it? So these thing, this way, we should be able to connect things which they are learning and which we are um, teaching in the class. Your previous class, previous month lesson, how it is connected with this. This is an indirect way of training our students. Now, I'm going to ask you to divide um, the listeners into two groups, those who have your uh, names from A to M, B, group A. I'm giving a set of questions to group A. From N to Z, Z, you'll have another set of questions. First, who's who are having name starting from A? I mean the alphabet of your name, first alphabet of your name, first letter of your name. If it falls between A and M, please read out these questions. English reading these questions. Then this is from for the people who have their names, first letter of their names from N to Z, Z. Read these questions.
Okay, now uh, we are going to deal with uh, two topics. One is uh, the space research in the, our country, and another one is election manifesto. To our, these two extreme issues are um, juxtaposed in order to bring in a kind of a critical thinking scenario and analyzing what is happening in reality in our country. So it is very interesting to note that. So I think uh, the understanding of the questions, I just... Now group B can see the questions. Now look at this cartoon. The bubble is an ordinary common man. He's saying it's going to the moon, right? Can you put this by election manifestos of all our parties? Two different positions, two different information. Totally, ISR has nothing to do with the election manifesto. Election manifestos have nothing to do with ISR or research space research of the country. But how these two things are connected? And also, I want you to pay particular attention to the dress of the scientists as well as the common man. This cartoon is rich with a lot of information. Yeah. Participants can uh, please type out your response. Keep me awake with your responses. Wonderful satire, very clever cartoon, okay. Now let us move on to the activity. See, for example, if you are discussing this, if you divide the students into two or three groups, um, group A or uh, a set of group A's and set of group B's, give different, uh, first give them different topics, different questions, make them, you know, uh, discuss about that. Then you show the cartoon and uh, make them, see the internal links, think about it. Now, this is the way you make the class very active, isn't it? Interactive class, communicative classroom, where everyone is involved in communication. Now look at the question. This is common question for all. After the first exercise, they see the cartoon and they do this exercise. You are, uh, it may be a worksheet, it may be you can, you know, project these questions on the board or, uh, you know, if you have a smartphone or you can write it down. If you are from a village uh, school or, uh, you know, remote school, you have only blackboard, you can write it on the board. What do you think is the status of India in terms of economic condition of the common man? Do you think all people are affluent? Do you think all the citizens of the country have enough resources to live a decent life? Yeah, common man, Mukund, Mr. Mukund has answered, common man is the ultimate sufferer, isn't it? He, so condition, he, Mr. Isha, condition is not so good. Okay. Do you think the political parties should implement what they promise in their election manifestos? Is it their responsibility? Then what is the implication of the man asking the scientists to put the election manifesto in the rocket going to the moon. He's saying hell with it, just throw it somewhere, isn't it? So this is, you know, instead of uh, satellites to see what is happening in the country from above, better is, goes, this will tell a lot about uh, our condition. Does the man do it out of necessity or out of frustration? This is again a critical question. Out of frustration, isn't it? Both out of necessity and frustration, yes. The frustration is shown metaphorically, correct? Now move on to the next question. 
Is there any significance about the difference in the appearance of the scientist and the common man as depicted in the picture? That's why I told you we'll have a look at their attire. Yes, clear difference, isn't it? Look at the size. They are well-fed scientists, well-dressed. Look at this fellow. All his bones are uh, seen outside. When the major section of the citizens are below the poverty line, is it fair to invest millions in space research? What, what, is, what should be the priority of the government? Making defense deals or to give basic necessities, bread and butter to the ordinary citizens. Can the money spent on space research be better utilized to take care of the need of a common man, of the common man? Now, some of you may ask, what is the disconnection with learning English? You are not only teaching learning English, but also these guys who are going to learn English with you are uh, maybe they become future MLAs, MPs and administrators of the country who will be involved in um, making legislations for the country. So when they are uh, given these kind of... Uh, you know, subjects, this kind of analysis, right from an early age, they became aware of the problems of common man. What is important? What is more, more important than, you know, spending money on um, rocket technology? Do you think governments should have a balanced plan to fund space research as well as for the betterment of the common man? What do you think are the ways of improving the lives of the common man? So now see, again, decision-making thinking. Definitely students will come out in my classes and all, they come out with uh, a lot of, uh, I don't use the, this particular topic in my classes here because it is not relevant to them. I ask different what is relevant to the Sultanate of Omar. And they are very enthusiastic about it and they communicate those, even those who are very shy in the class. Family girls here are very shy, but they come out with uh, very good uh, ideas. You know, you are indirectly prompting them to speak and communicate in the class. So this is the effect. It is an indirect uh, benefit you get as a teacher. So they have to make decision makers here. They have to say what are at least one or two ways the um, life of poor, poor people can be enhanced. Shall we go to the next one? Now read this uh, questions for a minute. This is related to the first exercise we did, Flamingo Egg, determining the authenticity and accuracy of the information you get. This also can be taught to our students using cartoons. Okay, what is this news picture information about? For any news or any picture, one has to ask. You are, uh, then you have to ask this, what is this information? Without thinking, people immediately react. Last month, sometimes I was kicked out of, kicked out of one of the academic uh, groups because I posted a picture. One person immediately started uh, quarreling with me and the admin said, uh, no, no, you are uh, not talking academics. Uh, and they removed both of us from the group. The other person, without even understanding what is the purpose of that, he started questioning me. Are you criticizing the prime minister? Then once it is over, evening I posted another picture, which has nothing to do with politics. It is a picture of a eagle lifting a drone. It uh, thought that it is a fly and it just simply grabbed and it was flying. That picture I posted in the group. Immediately he started again. I don't know who was the person at all. He takes it a freedom on himself. You know, this is how our society is functioning today. He immediately questions me, what? why do you post this picture at this time of the day? For him, it was 11 o'clock in the night. For him, it is 9 o'clock in the night. So one should understand all these things, you know, which has nothing to do with politics. He picked up an argument with me, which resulted in uh, me losing a membership in a research group. So this is, a, you know, as a member of the society, I also experience the, the 
effect of people's action, you know, very rash action people do. They see a picture, immediately they react. What is this news, picture, information? We should teach our students. Is it from a reliable source? Do you trust the source of information? What is the tone of the news, picture, information? Is it serious or funny if a person is posting a picture? Wait, whether there is any comment about this picture from him. Is he interpreting it? If he is posting a, just a picture, simply, it is up to you to interpret. He hasn't done anything. He's just showed that maybe it was, it, uh, he thought that it will be a thought-provoking picture. That's why he posted it. Maybe some people like it, some people don't like it. So when you like, um, you appreciate, and when you don't like, immediately you react. So these are all, a person should have a balanced uh, behavior, balanced way of interacting in uh, social for forums. They think that, you know, a person sitting in some other country is posting, so I am free. Maybe my relative is uh, working with you, or maybe my relative is your principal. You can get into trouble that way. So they, it doesn't, you know, social media, people take it for granted that they give a kind of anonymity and they can escape, get away with whatever they do. No. There is every possibility of today people getting connection, connected, and uh, you, you may receive uh, reactions from different uh, angles. You have to, you know, different uh, areas, different people. For the one thing you did to another person in social media, one should be aware. We should teach our students also about this. Every action they do in social media will have an equivalent opposite reaction. As simple as that. Today or tomorrow or any day. This is human nature. So what is the central message of the news picture information? Don't you think this is very relevant to teach our stu students to deal with things in social media? Also, further, does the news picture information have any political overtones? Does the news picture information reflect any political, racial, gender prejudices? Do you find any exaggeration in the news picture information? Most of the informations we get are exaggerated. Do you agree or disagree with what the news picture information illustrates why? You apply your own mind, analyze. If you agree, you agree. If you don't agree, you ignore. Or you simply say, I don't disagree with you, mister, because of these, these, these reasons. You need not become abusive. You need not uh, pick up a quarrel with other person. Because India is a society, highly solidarity oriented society. You cannot keep quarreling with people. You have to work along with them. You have to establish a very good relationship with people, even with the strangers. And when you move out of your home, you walk opposite of hundreds of people. Therefore, solidarity-oriented societies, people have to be more careful. What are the ways to authenticate and establish the accuracy of the information given in the news or picture or information? Which we have done that. You no, know, we saw the picture and went into the internet. Now look at this uh, picture. I am using this. This is not a cartoon, like it is a more like memes. I got it through a WhatsApp share. I am not able to find out who was the author of this. Something is the signature is there, but I couldn't understand, read the name from that. There is two messages. This English message is, uh, that one is translated by me here. BJP's budget can't be explained further or better. What do you see? Finance minister taking a kind of an avatar, dancing on a farmer bent on the field. Look at his dress, his bones, his lean figure. Is PPT not visible? visible? Okay, I will just um, remove it and... Uh, is it visible now? Is it, is it visible now? Yes, yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, sorry about it. It is because uh, the screen was static for a long time. It is a touch screen. So we have to keep, you know, touching it like babies. Okay. Now look at the. This is a kind of, um, you know, very drastic negative criticism about the budget. And um, now what we have to do is we have to find out the authenticity of the information given there. It, it looks like the budget is totally against the farmers. And, uh, you know, she's like a Kali dancing on the farmers. Um, okay. Now, how many of us, uh, how many of our students know what is budget? When is the union budget presented? Especially people coming from rural areas. Sometimes, you know, nowadays students from even uh, rich affluent families from city also, they don't bother to know all these things. They want to know what, uh, what will benefit them, what will fetch them a job. They are not bothered about uh, constitution or uh, budget or anything. They think that getting educated and uh, getting a job will uh, secure their life. What is more important than securing one's own life and living happily? They simply don't bother. Okay, but oh, why that is happening? Because they don't get that kind of training in the class. Now, this way we can train them in the class to be bothered about whatever happening around them. What is the budget? When is the union budget presented? Yeah, very basic general knowledge questions. What are the salient features of a budget? What do you know about the budget of 2019-20? What percentage of the total budget is allocated for agriculture and farmers welfare? Do you think agriculture and farmers are neglected in the budget? So these are some brainstorming questions you can ask, and this will, you know, generate a discussion and students can be allowed to use the mobile phone and research. Now it is a language lab. It is all the more um, interesting because when they use mobile, what ha happens is that they give a semblance of searching for the information, but they will be um, involved in WhatsApp or um, any other thing. So, okay. Now, the next set of questions. Do the schemes announce the allocations made in the budget sufficient for the farmers? What do you think of the cartoon after studying the schemes and fund allocation of the, you know, here they have to, you know, evaluate whether the message in that cartoon is correct or not. When you really analyze, you'll understand there are hundreds of you know, um, schemes for farmers, but only one question is whether it is reaching them. That is a kind of uh, thing we have to see. Then fifth one, basing judgment on uh, evidence from reliable sources. Now, again, this asking questions and all these things, I am skipping because I have repeated several times. And look at this cartoon. So judgment based on reliable information. Now, again, related to budget, this is... Uh, Swadi Vadalamudi, she's a cartoonist from Mahabub Nagar of uh, Telangana, present Telangana. So she has uh, done this about, uh, you know, so no minimum support price for the, uh, you know, agriculture products, no procurement from the government, suicides, farmer suicides are increasing, no response to protests, fertilizers prices are going up. But there is in, um, in the budget, they are saying, and whilst PM, Krishi Saman Yojana, Saman Yojana. So this is a Hindi word, I can't pronounce that very well, being a South Indian. Okay, so, you know, this is like, you know, removing the their dress and tying on their head, making them, you know, look nice, but in reality, they are hungry, they don't get enough. Now, again, we have to have a reality check. You know, what is this cartoon about? These are all general questions. Is it serious or funny? I'm going a little faster because now you know the uh, what I am arriving at, isn't it? Yeah. Is it serious or funny? What is the tone of the cartoon? What is the essential um, central message of the cartoon? And does the picture have any political overtones? And also it can go just like that, you know, asking many questions. You can ask them to verify the information, what are the schemes, what are the government decisions. And also you can have an extended activity, give a homework to the students, asking them to find out research on the different uh, 
schemes for the farmers and write an essay or bring a PowerPoint presentation to the next class showing all this information. Another thing is overcoming confusion. Sometimes confusion uh, becomes a very you know, important impediment in our life and we get confusion all the time. And uh, I shall share the PowerPoint um, through the organizers so you can, uh, you know, uh, have a look at it and uh, literally study this. So I am very quickly presenting the core issue presented here. And, uh, you know, one has to overcome confusion in order to make very good decision makers. So unless you, you know, get out of the confusion, you cannot progress. Also, you know, in order to overcome confusion, you should have patience. You should detach yourself, accept where you are, focus on what you know, seek knowledge, be humble and patient, hope for the best. Okay, so in order to explain this, I am showing a cartoon. This is, there is a bear, economic slowdown, it is catching the common man, but the prime minister is pushing this, uh, you know, pulling the common man and showing that look at Kashmir. So for this common man, this um, roti and kana or uh, bread and butter is more important than what is happening in Kashmir, isn't it? So now there is a kind of diversionary tactics. You have to understand that. So in life, even um, many business administration use this kind of diversity tactics to you know, divert people and make them buy. All these things are happening in our country. It is all over the world, the same thing. So then the second quest of questions, in comparison, which is more significant problem, economic slowdown or Kashmir problem? What do you think will directly affect a large number of people in the country? Solving Kashmir issue or uh, solving um, the hunger of people, ordinary people? Do you think the act of the prime minister is justified? Again, a kind of uh, decision-making question. So you have to say yes or no. If you say yes, why? If you say no, why? What is the intent of the prime minister according to the cartoon? Just a diversionary you know, tactics. What do you think should be the priority of the government? Solving the economic issue or diverting people's attention to smaller issues? Now I am coming to the, there can be an extended activity, allowing students to study and maybe all the students can uh, join together, submit a group assignment. The last one is resisting manipulation. So manipulation is also like uh, um, confusion. Manipulation is also one of the things that's are uh, going on in a society, politically, socially, caste-wise manipulation, class-wise manipulation, all these things, you know, our students should be able to come out of it. They should be able to detach from these kind of manipulations. Now, when we are um, talking, training them to come out of the manipulations. Let us look at this particular uh, cartoon for a minute. Now, um, the BJP government brought a reservation for all the forward cast. Now look at the banana leaf, it is empty. Look at the job, the tin which is representing job, it is empty. But behind, Amit Shah is asking for vote for BJP. Now this is a kind of manipulation, isn't it? I mean, as it is presented, whether it is true or not, we, have, we know only looking at the employment statistics of uh, forward people after this is announced, how many people got job, whether it is true or not. So in order to analyze this, we have to ask, the first questions are common questions. Why do you think the banana leaf is empty? Okay, then uh, I'm going to more intense questions. Do you think the man is happy with the job reservation offer? Is he happy with the job reservation or getting a job for himself? Does the man know that the pot is empty? We, we get manipulated by empty promises. We just get carried away. We don't uh, look into the um, pot, whether there is enough rice for me to have lunch now. What is the possible state of the mind of the man? Expectation, isn't it? He's expecting. Don't you think it is essential to study the promise of uh, political parties clearly before voting for them, whether they'll implement this, fulfill these promises? Do we think the situation depicted in the picture portrays an attempt to manipulate the voter? Of course, maybe there is a, maybe the degree may be varying, 10%, 30%. Do you think uh, the common man will succumb to the manipulations? Of course, yes. We, we are uh, easy, pre, you know, 
fall for uh, this kind of manipulations because we love a particular party or love a particular personality we tend to vote for them after that uh, you can uh, you know have a homework extended activity do you think the cartoon depicts manipulation then what kind of manipulation you can ask them to write an essay or you can have a debate in the class in the next class prepare for a debate students can be asked to come prepared divide them into two groups ask them to speak debate on this one for and one against so that the communication can be enhanced so i am coming to the summing up part i went little faster to save time and also you know once uh, you have um, been through two three analysis then you know how to analyze this yourself and uh, you know um, use it in your class that's why i just uh, went little faster developing strong sit critical thinking abilities in college students is the need of the hour it is very important our students should be good at critical thinking as they are required to be well informed decision makers in their personal as well as professional lives i think you will not disagree with me students can be systematically trained in ct by language teachers as language is a tool for enhancing one's thinking skills and the expression of thoughts when students become critical thinkers they become proficient in communicating their thoughts with clarity it will also enhance their ability to analyze problems situations and to find suitable solution with ease i'm just reading out because already i have discussed this and you can follow this as teachers you can very grasp things very quickly as it is demonstrated in the presentation it is easy to develop critical thinking among students if a teacher could use relevant materials like um, political cartoons on current political issues they are very fitting to develop core critical thinking strategies in students cartoons are excellent materials for the class because they are um, providing rich uh, information for discussion projects uh, debates writing essays writing paragraphs writing um, discussing cause and effect infrastructure to make a persuasion essay all any infrastructure can be discussed by using political cartoons a teacher can plan activities that can be done by students individually or in pairs or in groups so any kind of activity you can make when they work in pairs or groups they can align their thinking and have a discussion on the political and social implications of the cartoons and unravel the meaning of the cartoons they are studying so not only discussing the political scene but uh, unravel different uh, you know it's visual learning they learn a lot of things while they analyze the cartoons they get a chance to share their knowledge obtained from their experience in the world you know again application oriented what they learn in society they apply in the class what they apply what, what they learn in the class and apply in the class they apply in their life you know it is um, a kind of uh, mutually um, needed or mutually important um, social function bringing society to the class and so you know taking society back to the class the teacher can uh, design activities in such a way to integrate all the four language skills you can you know students are listening to you they are speaking they are reading the questions and they are writing and more and moreover the most uh, you know skill which can be developed through these kind of activities is their speaking skills indirectly you can even shy students can they forget about their grammar they forget about everything they have become so emotional and so interested and they just keep blabbering out information and whatever they know and they will compete with one another to give out their information this is how you develop their communication skills later they you can tone the way they speak or whatever it is the modalities we can change later but first allow them to open their mouth and speak give them an opportunity offer opportunities for them to speak the customized activity designed by a teacher provide the appropriate framework for the students to accomplish the learning objectives that's also done the choice of materials and type of task design depends mainly on the targeted learning objectives and the creativity of the teacher so creativity of the teacher how creative you are the most successful you are with diligent thinking and careful planning a language teacher can efficiently develop critical thinking among students using cartoons this is my conclusion and if i am going to a lower session i won't use political cartoons i will use pictures like this the same thing i can um, anyone can do see there is no need you have to take a cartoon you take any whatsapp share one memes whatever it is which you can customize for the purpose of teaching and developing communication and thinking skills to students i would like to acknowledge these people cartoonist alok swadi vadalamudi satish acharya and jubanis these are the cartoons
and Mr. Sultan Al Degaisi is my head of the department here in Oman, English department. So, uh, for providing all the support, and Dr. Vijay Singh Thakur, Associate Professor of English, also he is also more. I have quoted from some of his articles, and he is my mentor and uh, he is the inspiration for me to do research and presentations. Um, and all participants and the organizers. These are the references which uh, when I share with you, you can just uh, go through it. And now we are, the floor is up, open for uh, questions and observations. And as far as possible, I will answer. And uh, if I can ask some of the participants who would also respond. Uh, thank you, Professor. <laughs> Uh, it was a great session, and uh, I request uh, the webinar participants with coming uh, any questions on the discussion forum right now. I request the participants to come up with the chat box, or you can ask directly to the professor, where you can unmute your audio. Hello. Yes, please uh, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, my yeah. name is Pragya. I am coming yeah. from Bangalore. Uh, my question is that, uh, like, which will be the best strategy to develop uh, critical thinking skills among secondary school students in language? Language basically English. Yeah. So, see, uh, you can um, use many material. If you are asking about materials, you can use many materials. You can use a short video. You can um, use a movie clip. You can use a short story. You can use a picture. You can use a drawing. Okay. You can um, take a news item from um, uh, that day's newspaper, discuss with them. You can use uh, small, small poems also to develop. Okay. And the strategies is uh, we are follow. you know, like you don't tell them I'm here there, uh, to develop your critical thinking. So this is whole idea is done in a very indirect way. I I think you, all of you got it actually. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know, like uh, uh, some of the teachers sometimes ask me, sir, we have our syllabus to handle. Where do we get uh, time? What I do is I do this as a ten minutes. We have classes of two hours here. First ten to fifteen minutes, I do it as a warm up. Every day I take one issue, one picture, one video. Just to, you know, create a kind of a nice atmosphere among the students also to seek their attention towards me in order to teach them. So this can be a regular kind of activity which you can follow over the semester or over the whole academic year if it is a semester system or if it is a school, it is a long academic year, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Yeah. So sir, Any... constructivist approaches, are they suitable for the development of critical thinking skills? Yeah, there are many, many different kinds of approaches. So okay. This is one approach. Yeah, I have discussed only one approach. I cannot be prescriptive. Yes. They can be only suggestive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Nice okay. question. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much. Uh, there is one question. Uh, maybe how useful it would be. It will be to use political cartoon as it may create discrimination in class of adult students. I disagree with you because uh, this is where uh, you, the moment you, the students understand that you are detached, you don't entertain in politics, you don't belong to a particular uh, section of society. I mean, you are, of course, you have your own politics, you belong to a particular community, you only belong to a particular religion. But when you come to the classroom, when you show your detachment and seeing your personality and seeing the way you deal with it, there won't be any problem. So uh, far, I have not encountered any problem, but I have come across very fiery discussions. So that uh, provocative discussions will be there. That is one way of teaching them also. When a students get provoked, provoked, you can just moderate him. So this is how, and tomorrow when he gets provoked uh, in society, he, he will behave in a moderate ma manner. Like the incident I told, the other person was behaving in a very moderate or uh, very explosive way, arguing with me, creating more trouble than required for that particular posting of mine. Understand? So this is the way you have to take challenges and you have to be careful also. You cannot um, choose cartoons which are very explicit, sexually explicit, religiously very explicit, neutral. And these cartoons are also can be risky. So how you design the activity. So you have to use your discretion as well as your um, sharpness to develop that. 
even if a student is objecting to it, you should be able to manage him. That is, we are adults, isn't it? We are experienced teachers. Sir, I have a question to ask. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, I'm Rajita and I'm from University College for Women, Hyderabad. So okay. I have, uh, I'm enrolled as a PhD scholar on the topic of critical thinking analysis. So okay. uh, can you justify this, uh, this topic, sir? No, can you come again? Can you give me a small clue? Can you, give me little more, clue can you tell me a little, what is your topic of PhD? Uh, it is about uh, reading, uh, it, it is about exploring the relationship between reading skills and critical thinking. Yeah, so okay. So uh, actually this is a very relevant topic. Um, uh, here there are many strategies like uh, skimming strategies, scanning strategies. Uh, skimming and st strategies and scanning strategies can be um, repeated uh, in the class with the students, if you are doing something related, uh, you know, a practical research and uh, slowly inculcate in reading also, you can um, give a lot of comprehensive questions. The way I did for a cartoon, if you take a paragraph or if you take a short story or an article, you um, read it, make questions, relevant questions, which will, you know, make them um, think. Also, you can, you know, give sc scaffolding. You know, step by step yes, uh, way yes, of yes. you know increasing the scaffold through scaffold. You can very easily develop critical thinking. Reading is a very good uh, activity to develop critical thinking. Maybe sometimes it works uh, much uh, better than cartoons uh, at a uh, higher level, postgraduate level, research level. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, somebody has asked me a question there. How can we connect cartoons from wide range with UG students in the age of, of apps such as TikTok? You know, like, okay, uh, this is a quite a bit of challenging. What is, uh, you know, attracting them outside the class? Why do, sometimes you can direct them to make a TikTok video about uh, a particular topic. Goal directed. That's why in critical thinking, one important thing is goal directed. They are doing many videos without any goal just to make themselves... Uh, you know, seen by others, attention seeking, but rather you make them do something related to the topic, give a talk on that particular topic, record, play it in the class. So make a kind of constructive turn of events, then we can definitely handle that. I think that question is from Mr. Kiran Pratish. Thank you, it is a nice question. Then, uh, Improving critical thinking or criticism of certain political parties, I think we can give other examples and keep our, yeah, it is, uh, you know, like uh, you cannot detach yourself from politics. They say uh, you can take a man out of village, but uh, you cannot take the village out of him. Similarly, we cannot make uh, take out politics from ourselves. We need not, uh, even if we have uh, some sites to support, we need not take sites when we are uh, teachers. Teachers are an individual entity, a different species altogether. You have to manage. How can we relate reading skills to critical thinking? I think I have answered that. How can we implement critical thinking in tech subjects? Same technology can be applied. If you are um, teaching about, um, for example, diesel engines, now, um, you are teach it, if you are a mechanical engineer, you are teaching about diesel engines. Why don't you make them study the consequences of diesel engine uh, in our society related to pollution? What are the um, impacts, negative impacts of critical, sorry, diesel engines? Are there any, what, what, why the government um, allowed the diesel engines in the society? So they will go study and uh, come out with uh, different uh, ideas. They will understand it better. So it will help them to implement future, um, you know, mechanisms which will have uh, very less impact uh, in the environment. So any any subject for that matter. Extending from classroom to the society is very important.
are there any questions dear participants is there any questions to be discussed over here so hope there is no questions can you yeah. wind up the session sir yes. yeah really thank you to all the participants and the organizers nice uh, interacting with you i really enjoyed uh, presenting with and thank you for your um, timely responses also i felt like being in india thank you very much yeah thank you professor and uh, as per our agenda now i just invite uh, salman alam director of wisdom education consultancy to propose vote of thanks as official note of it yeah please go hello yes okay. dear all walaikum salam sir walaikum salam sir thank you so much it's a wonderful session sir thank you dear all greetings from team philomen i am happy to present vote of thanks in the first day of five days international webinar series i hope everyone has enjoyed the session because his way of uh, engaging was good and interactive too i'm not hoping but i'm confident that his cartoon speaks the conscience his content criticize and encounter the current scenario and what is happening in and around us in a critical way he clinically clearly and critically criticize everything on his allotted theme through his presentation and his satirical tone thank you sir and uh, i take this opportunity to thank our organizing committee and vishnu it is over to you thank you so much